Hi right, guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Today we're doing a special members video. If you're one of my members, you've joined my membership club, you get special perks like individual help with certain machines that you may have at home that I can walk you through problems. So today's uh, video is for my newest member, uh, Miss Bratkovic. And she has the same yard bug here that I've done a few videos on. Uh, I have an issue with my pulleys. So this has been sitting now for the last week or so while I'm waiting on my pulleys to come. Um, but she has an issue. I've got an email from her. Uh, I've spoken to her a few times. And what basically what she's saying is when she turns the key, nothing is happening. Now, she tells me that she's not really worked on machines in the past. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of experience, maybe none at all. And she was going to have a mechanic in her area look at it. And they told her it was 85 bucks just to look at it. And that wasn't a guarantee that they'd even know what it was. The price would be much higher. So I try to make videos for my members specifically if I can to help them out. So she tells me... She's found all the safety switches, but she doesn't know which ones uh, she needs to deal with. She wants to remove the safety switches, but she's not sure how to go about it, what to do. Here's the problem. Uh, some safety switches are what they call normally open, okay? Which means that <clears throat> if, <clears throat> like if you're sitting on the seat, when you sit on the seat, you push the, the button down and it closes that switch. So it makes a connection. And that's a safety that's on these machines. Now you also have ones that are normally closed, which means they already make the connection. And when you push the button, you undo the connection and open them up. So when you're dealing with a machine that has several safety switches on it, some are gonna be normally open and some are gonna be normally closed. So you can't just unplug them uh, and expect everything's gonna be okay. Because that would be the same as you not sitting on your seat if you just unplug it that's the same as you not sitting on your seat so it doesn't make a connection um so rewiring this thing i removed all the safety switches on this which i do on all my own equipment including my zero turn and basically i have mine down to five wires i think yeah there's only five wires one is from the key to the solenoid uh, one is a ground for the whole thing uh, I'll, I'll make a different video on that later But what she's got going on right now is when she turns the key Nothing is happening. The machine won't start. It won't click. It won't make any noise So the first thing that you got to look at is to make sure that your key works first position is the run position Second position is the one that will spring back for you when you let it go That's the one that starts when you let it go, it lets off the starter, and then there's off. So the middle position or the run position is where you want to keep this machine. Now, what I do in the case of I've got a dead key, the first thing I do personally is jump the solenoid. Now, you can do that pretty easily. If I remember where it is here, it's right there. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy, simple way to jump the solenoid. So hang on a second, let me get set up. Now what we have here is, I had to put a battery in real quick. What we have here is what's supposed to happen when you turn the key, right? It's supposed to turn the engine. Okay, great. But when she turns her key, nothing's happening. So make sure you're in the middle position or the run position. That's off, that's middle, and watch. Okay, it springs back, that's the run position. Now this right here is where your battery goes. There's the motor. There's where your battery goes. There's your starter. Right here is your starter solenoid. Now you see it has one, two nuts on it, okay? And they're separated by this big thick piece of plastic. So if you wanna see if your solenoid's any good, which is the first thing that I always do, I take a regular pair of pliers and what I do is I touch both of those nuts with the pliers and if I do that and I've got good power in the battery watch what happens when I do that you 
okay? So if you take your pliers and you touch both sides of the solenoid and your starter turns and your motor turns, then you know that your solenoid is bad. So that means you got to replace your solenoid. Now, when you, when you do that, it's always going to start because all basically you're doing is taking power from one nut, sending it over to another. Your solenoid is just a switch that connects those two nuts together inside the switch. So when you turn the key, it sends power to that solenoid, makes those two connect. That's how your starting system works. So all we're doing is finding out whether your key is bad or your solenoid is bad. If you have safety switch issues, your, your safety switches are sometimes wired through your starting system. In other words, if you don't press the brake pedal and you turn the key, nothing will happen. That's a safety switch that's wired through the solenoid. If your blades are turned on and you hit the key, nothing will happen. Uh, in some machines, if you try to go in reverse, reverse is fine, but reverse when the blades are on, it'll shut off. But what we're trying to find out right now is if your solenoid is bad. So turn the key to the middle position, use some pliers, touch both bolts together. It'll spark on you, put them together, press hard and hold it for a second. You'll be able to figure it out right easily. Now that's what I always do to find out first if that's the problem with my starting system if you try it that way and it starts wonderful turn it back off if you try it that way and it just spins like mine does that's because i don't have any gas in it but if it spins when you use the plier method and it still won't start then the next thing you're going to want to do is check for spark that could also be a safety switch issue now if you go down to harbor freight i think they're five dollars six dollars something like that you can get this tool right here this is a spark checker okay that's all it is your spark plug see if i can get you down here and again guys this is for a specific member and a specific problem so if you don't like the video it's not going to be a whole lot of editing move on to another one Here's your spark plug wire right here. And I always put a zip tie on mine. That way if I ever have to stop the machine, I don't have to grab the wire and get shocked. I can just grab the zip tie, pull the wire off, we're good to go. So your spark tester here, the elbow end will go right on your spark plug, the existing spark plug, and this end goes into your spark plug wire. The reason that you do that is because when you turn the key or you use the pliers, you'll be able to see the spark right there. You'll be able to see that light light up. Let me grab my pliers and I'll show you. Okay, I'm trying to do this like an octopus here. There's our spark checker right in place. Don't worry, my hand's not going to hit anything that moves. And I would take the pliers and I would put them across the solenoid and make this thing spin. And if you have spark, you'll see this thing light up. Now I can just turn my key because my key works. Now I can see that spark shocking all over the place. Let me see how close. Oh, I can zoom you right in good. Now, let's make sure that I stay in frame. And you're gonna look right there and you'll see it spark. So for five or six bucks, you're gonna want this tool. Because you could spin this engine all day long and it won't start and you won't know whether it's a fuel problem, you won't know whether it's a electrical problem, and you're gonna spend a hundred bucks easily dealing with a mechanic. Go spend five bucks at Harbor Freight on this tool, order it on Amazon, I know your time is limited. But that's what I would do. That's the two most important things. If the solenoid is no good, you hit it with the pliers, the starter will turn the motor. If it starts, you know you have spark. But if it does not start after a minute or so, uh, you could try spraying some carburetor cleaner, some starting fluid, whatever. Take your air cleaner off, spray it right down the throat of the carburetor, and it'll start right up. So again, go to the store for $3, buy a can of carburetor cleaner or whatever. See if I can fix this. Starting fluid, carburetor cleaner, 
this is what I use and here I'll even show you that take your air filter off which mine's already undone take your air filter off don't lose your little wing nut get that out of the way I just lost it all right okay that's the opening right there take a little bit of this Spray it right down in there and watch how fast this thing will start. It'll die right away too, but it'll start. Unless I didn't put the spark plug back on. <laughs> I didn't put the spark plug wire back on. Now it should start. See how it starts right up and dies. Now if I had fuel in there, it would continually run, but my fuel tank is empty. So those are the two most important things that you can check. Check for spark and check your solenoid now there is another way to check for spark let me show you that too okay if you don't have a chance to get to the store there's not one around you in your area or you just simply don't want to spend six dollars there's another way to check your spark pull your spark plug out make sure we're in frame and this right here is your electrode okay this has to be grounded to something so if you take this right here and you put it up against a bolt or something metal on the machine and you turn the key and it's grounded you'll actually see the spark let me see if I can do it without shocking myself see that? you should be able to see the spark jumping right across there Now I have spark. If you test it and you do not have spark, get yourself a new spark plug, screw it in, put your wire back on, try it again. Now, if you can't, the other thing with the solenoid here real quick is that the solenoid has to be plugged in, okay? All your wires have to be put on just like they are, but this wire is the most important. This is the power wire coming from the key. And you see I got a bunch of zip ties here in the way from stuff. This wire right here is the one that comes directly from the key. This is a power wire. And it just gets plugged onto that spade right there. If that's loose or it's off completely, when you hit the key, nothing will happen. Because what happens is when you hit the key, it sends power through that red wire right to your solenoid and that's the power that closes the switch and makes the starter work so just check to make sure that that wire is plugged in it's connected it's not rotten you're good to go you can also take a wire and go directly from the positive side of any battery and touch that post and it should make that click and it'll make your starter turn also that's how you know if your solenoid's bad if your solenoid's bad go spend 18 bucks at your local auto parts store sells them um, order one on Amazon. I can send you the numbers by email if you need part numbers and you want to order from Amazon. They're $16 to $20. Take it, replace it. Watch the wires you take off of it. Put them on the new one exactly the same way. Get your solenoid fixed. That could be your only problem. Check for spark. If you have spark and you either turn the key or jump the solenoid, the motor spins but it doesn't start, then you have another issue. So those are the things that you wanna check first. If you don't have spark, and this is the harder one, if you don't have spark, I'm gonna show you exactly how I find out why I don't have spark. If your safety switches are all messed up, some of them are disconnected, some of them aren't, you need to take this top cover off. So let me do this. This top cover has to come off. There are two screws right here. One, two, that I've already loosened. You have to take out the fuel tank, which I've already undone. And there are two more screws, two more bolts. One here and one right here. Take all four of those out and also take the screw out of your dipstick because you're going to need to move that out of the way. Let me take those all the way out and I'll show you what's happening. Okay, I've taken out the four bolts. One, two, three, four. And when I took these out, 
you have this fitting right here. You see the holes there and there. That attaches just like so. And that's what your gas tank sits on. So make sure you put that back when you're finished. Take that off and put it out of the way. Also, take out the one on your dipstick. And take your dipstick out. Now your dipstick just plugs in right there at the bottom. And make sure you don't lose anything when you take it off. There's a little clip here that I dropped. I know where all this stuff goes. And I'm trying to film this with a tripod half an hour before it gets dark. And I don't know where that thing fell to. But be careful when you take it apart. It has that little clip. That clips right onto your dipstick there. See how there's no bolt holes or anything in that? It's because that clip slides over it. And that's what goes on the top of the motor. So you just stick the bottom back in the hole. Put that clip back down. Bolt it back down. Now the reason that we took out those five bolts. And we're going through all this. Is because. We're going to remove this top cover. Just comes right off. Easy peasy right? Okay. Believe me, when you're working on it, it's a whole lot easier than when you're just watching it. So, here's what we got. Okay. This is your magneto. Okay, this unit right here. It has two bolts in it. One here, one here. As you see, it just has a wire that touches your spark plug. That's all a magneto is. I don't need to explain to you what it is if you have to... If you need to know what it is I'll email you and explain to you how it works it's not that important but what is important is right underneath let me see if I can get you around here and show you right on the underside of that magneto is a wire get this one out of the way this wire right here okay now watch what happens I wiggle and pull on it and see it's a spade connection I can't really get the camera down there to show you but in fact I'll try right there on the bottom there's a spade connection touching my fingernail right now okay you see it that's it right there and that is where this wire plugs in. Sorry, I'm shaking. I'm just trying to get this done. Let me zoom out a little. Oops, wrong way. Come on. Okay, that spade connection is what you're looking for right there. So you take that wire that's on there and you pull it off. Now, this wire is the only thing that is stopping or that is connecting your safety switches to your motor whatsoever. What I've done by unplugging that wire is taken off everything that will steal your electricity. Everything that will steal your spark. Okay? Which means that if you had a bad safety switch and you could get the engine to turn but you weren't getting any spark. Okay? You didn't get any spark out of your spark plug. You replaced your spark plug for five bucks which normally is not the case, but if it's a machine that's been sitting around a long time, it could be. If it's a safety switch issue, when you turn the motor and you're not getting a spark, whether you checked it with your spark tester, okay, remember when I plugged that in, or when I just took the spark plug and stuck it against the bolt and watched the electricity flow. If you weren't getting any spark, by unplugging this wire right here, that takes away all your wiring. Now, all that leaves you with is a, is a normal motor. You take that wire off, you don't even have to put your cover back on. It'll run just fine with, well, your oil dip sticks out. So take that, take that wire off, put everything back on real quick. Let me just show you, I'm not gonna do it. Put this back on real quick. Make sure that's coming out where it's supposed to. Fit that back on and in place. Okay. Put your bolts back in it. One, two, three, four, 
get your dipstick put your dipstick back in because if you don't when you turn over the motor it's going to shoot oil out from where the dipstick is stick your dipstick back in place okay put your little fitting put all your bolts back in it now when you turn the engine whether you turn it by key or whether you use your pliers across the solenoid when that spins you'll have electricity coming from your magneto to your spark plug if you still okay so you'll get your electricity back the motor will start the problem is then it won't stop so that's where the zip tie comes in again so you get it started by this method you unplug that wire now you turn the key backwards to shut it off and the motor keeps running that's because there's nothing to steal the spark away when you turn the key off so you have to reach down grab your zip tie pull that wire off and it'll shut off then you know you can plug that wire back in take the cover off put the wire back in you know for sure that it's one of your five safety switches if you want to run it just like that with without being able to turn it off by the key you just want to pull that zip tie and shut it off because you're in an emergency and you want to cut it's perfectly fine you can absolutely run it that way put everything back together leave that wire off start the dang thing after you replace the solenoid if you needed to start it up drive it around cut the grass when you're finished grab your zip tie pull that wire off and you're done if that still does not work if you still are not getting spark either by the spark plug checker or seeing the actual electricity on the tip of the spark plug then you have a bad magneto that means you got to get a magneto take out the two bolts put it back on I can make a specific video on that as well although if you watch my other videos I've I've shown that in about 10 videos maybe 15 of them so those are the things that I check and that's the way that I check it the first thing I check is if the solenoid's good take a pair of pliers turn the key to the on position stick them across there see if the motor starts then I'm pretty sure it's a solenoid check for spark by the spark tester or by taking the spark plug on the wire touching the motor with it while it spins watching the electricity then if I'm not getting any spark before I try to figure out individual switches and wiring and is there a bare wire did a mouse chew on a wire whatever the first thing I do take off that cover unplug the wire from the magneto put it back on spin it see if I got my spark back those are the steps that I go through to figure out to pinpoint what is wrong with the machine now you can rewind this and watch it back as much as you want to so you can go specifically step by step by step if you still can't figure out what's going on with it I'll try and go deeper into it but if you do the things that I said in this video you will get this machine started today you don't even have to buy anything to get it to start the pliers will tell will switch over the solenoid so you don't even have to buy that just to know what's wrong with it to know whether you have spark to know whether it'll run and to shut it off if you take off that wire pull your zip tie pull the spark plug wire off you will spend zero dollars with the exception of maybe five bucks for a spark spark plug checker and you will know exactly what's wrong with your machine you will know exactly what parts you need to go to the store and buy you will not buy things you don't need and i'm making this pretty much in real time so if it turns out to be a 30 minute video it took me about 45 minutes to figure this out so i hope this helps I appreciate you joining my memberships and helping to support the channel. Um, sorry this is not going to be a very well edited video. I am basically going to throw these clips together and get it up online for you. Um, anybody else interested in memberships? There's a button right at the bottom of the video. Click memberships. It's five bucks a month. It helps to support me while I continue to make videos, help you with your projects. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming by. See you soon.